I don't think there's going to be any questions on girl or boy math on higher level paper one but Louise Boylan from Dublin's Institute of Education is here to talk us through what will be. Louise, let's start off with a brief look at the format of paper one. How long do students have? How many sections? And what is each section worth? Sure. Hi, Maura. So there's two sections on the exam paper, section A, section B. They're split equally, so 50% for each. Section A is what we call the short questions, although they're not terribly short. They're each worth 30 marks. That's just 10% of the paper each. They have to answer five out of six there. What I would recommend is that they spend 12 minutes per question if they can. If they can get out of there in 12 minutes, that's great, because then that's an hour that they've spent at a maximum 15 minutes, right? So they need to be aiming for 12 minutes if they go a minute or two over. But when it gets to 15 minutes, they need to be gone because they're only robbing time from somewhere else on the exam. For section B, it's also worth 50 percent, but they're longer questions. They've only to answer three out of four in section B. And again, in terms of time wise, I tell them to aim for 20 minutes. So three twenties is an hour. So if they stick to the lower ends, they'll have an hour section A and hour section B gives them half an hour at the end to kind of go back over it. But at a maximum for section B, 25 minutes or they're gone. OK, yeah. so section A, uh, concepts and skills, it's what you call drill and skill. You have to know the concepts and you have to show how to that you know how to use them. Yeah, absolutely. So the questions that come up in section A are a bit more formulaic. It's here's an equation, solve the equation, here's a graph, interpret the graph, here's a, a shape, find the area, find the volume, whatever it might be. And they are really looking at the concepts and the ki- and the skills. Can the student, do the students understand the basic concepts? Can they apply their skills? Can they solve the equations? Can they apply their formulae? When we get to section B, it's contexts and applications. And the questions in that section tend to be in a story. And they go over many, many pages. They could be four or five pages long, depending on the, on the question on the year. And they will generally have a common thread running through them. But within that, they could examine multiple topics. OK, so the topics then that come up in section A, are they generally like what kind of topics come up and can you kind of pick and choose are the things that you can leave out to study or not? So this is the problem with the maths papers is um, so first of all, the paper covers for se- for the entire paper. The topics are algebra, which is huge, right? That's 30, maybe even 40 percent of the exam. And <coughs> that has all their equations and then also indices and logs, functions, graphing. That's a huge section. They also have a section then called calculus, which is split up into differentiation. And there's that's broken up again into uh, uh, rules and applications. Then we have integration within that as well. Then we have another section called sequences and series, which also embodies something called financial maths. Then we have two smaller sections, complex numbers and induction. And the thing about the maths course is it's a free for all. Anything is anywhere. You can have a question that draws from four of those different topics intermingled into one question. So while they have choice on the exam, there's nothing said of what topic is going to be in each question. So, and to answer your question, no, they can't leave anything out. <laughs> okay. So, to give an example of why what you might be asked, so you might be given a blank graph and have to plot a label and a, uh, a plot and label a complex number on the diagram based on the formula you are given. What do you need to study in order to nail those kind of questions? A lot of it is practice. They need to make sure that you're trying as many past paper questions that you can get your hands on, mock paper questions, questions from textbooks, go buy another textbook. It's a bit late in the day to do that, but that's an idea for if you're in fifth year, bring it forward. At this stage, you need to be trying all different exam questions. But the key is you have to make sure that you have the solutions. OK, so that you can like check if you were if you didn't get it right, what did you do wrong? And then looking at section B, I I was looking through it and I actually really like this. I like that maths are being brought into stories. So like Mm. the first question for last year is like Fia has a gross annual salary of 54,000 euro. And then it's asking about how much tax she's Mm -hmm. paying. So talk me through those kind of questions. How should you approach them? Again, it's just practice, but every question, the the examiner is is expert in making new questions, um, innovative questions, and really they just need to be sure of all their concepts. And there's often clues in the questions. They need to be sure they read the question very, very carefully, look for the clues in the questions. The examiner is often helping them as they go along. And even sometimes there's there's text in bold print. I always say to my students, that's the examiner screaming at you there. They want to draw your attention to that. It's just down to practice. But it's but they just have to try as many different types of questions as they can get their hands on, really. 
And the topics then in section B, like is it things like area and volume, can that can crop up a lot? That can pop up anywhere, but it's the same topics again. So they're they're throughout the whole exam paper. It's the same. So it's not like, again, other subjects, say for a science subject, where you might have a section on your experiments and another section on something else. The maths isn't like that. So we just have the topics and anything can come up anywhere in the exam paper, any of those topics. You like students to build up their confidence and then leave doing kind of the tougher questions to the end. Mm. Talk me about talk to me about that approach. Yeah, well, I think some students can get hung up on because there's choice and they're worried about which question should I leave out. And I always say, don't worry about it because you're going to know you're going to open up the exam paper. You're going to look at one question and go, nope, not going to do that one. <laughs> the best thing to do is just open up, look for one that looks approachable, looks familiar. I've seen something like that before and you can get into it and you need to start picking up those points very, very quickly. The marking scheme they, they need to be very comfortable with the marking scheme and when they do get into the marking scheme they'll realise that a lot of the marks are awarded for the early parts of the questions and as you move down as the question gets harder and you're going on to a second page of solving an equation that's only going to be worth a mark or two because the majority of students aren't going to get there so don't get yourself in a tizzy over that just leave it move on pick up the, the early marks and other questions and then if you have time at the end come back and try again because there was yeah. a lot of controversy over the 2023 paper wasn't mm-hmm. there and people got Got worried over it and then it all worked out fine in the end. <clears throat> it always works out fine in the end and that's the SEC's job in <laughs> fairness is if they over pitch an exam or an exam in that case there was multiple things on the exam paper that had never been examined before and students just simply had never seen it before. They weren't prepared for it. They hadn't practiced it because it wasn't in any past paper questions. They might have done a bit of it in class. So uh, the SEC then just has to reshuffle the marks. They take the marks away from those and give it to the, the bits the students could do. Yeah. So yeah, and for the the SEC is the State Examinations Commission. Just in case, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, when it comes to study techniques, um, you say you don't study maths, you practice it. You practice maths. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's certain things you have to study. There's a few proofs come up. They have to study techniques. They have to go to get to know techniques. But the only way to do it is practice, 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 practice the same question again. Pick up an exam paper that maybe you did a month ago. See, can you do it again? It does. It doesn't matter if you know, as I will say, it doesn't matter if you know X is two. It's not a murder mystery. It doesn't matter. Can you get there again without having to pull back on your notes, without having to look it up? Right. And it's just down to that. It's just practice, practice, like learning music, learning the piano. Keep at it. Keep and practicing. you advocate maybe as well having a study buddy. Yeah, yeah, I think it works really well. Um, particularly, it has to be somebody that you trust, somebody <laughs> that you're very friendly with, somebody who's not going to ridicule you, right? And it is a, it is a difficult one. But what I would do or what I encourage my students to do is to you know, pick an exam question, study on topic, pick an exam question, do it each and then swap it over because then they get practice in correcting and seeing how well someone else would have done a question so they might see a different method and how the marking scheme is applied and correcting. And they're both learning by doing that. You're learning it. You learn more from that than correcting your own work, mm. I think, you know, because you'll see, OK, what did you do? And oh, you would have got that many marks. Yeah, but it has to be someone you trust. Yeah. And you mentioned they're just trying to pick up as many marks as possible. How do you see students often dropping marks unnecessarily? Leaving blanks is a big one. They look at a question, they panic and they just oh, and they leave a blank and they have to do something, try something. And it could be just pick right down the correct formula, just put numbers in all the better, even if they don't know. Ultimately, the big thing we get is I don't know what the question's asking me, but you know, just calm down for a start and read it slowly and look for the clues in the question. Write down the information you have. Sometimes, even if you don't know the end game, pull out the information. So if it's a question and they're saying, say it's a volume question, the height of the thing is this, the radius is this, whatever. If you write those down, H equals or equals and the formula, you're on the mark ladder already because you've read the question, you've engaged with the information, you've understood what information you've been given and you have an idea of how to start. Yeah, the examiner is not trying to trick you. No, the examiner, and in fact, in many cases, the examiner is trying to help you, you know, and mm-hmm. they need to look out for that as well because sometimes say there's a question there and the first question is work out the radius or show, but what they'll often say is show that the radius is five centimetres. And if you can't do that, you just keep going because now you know what the radius is. So bring it forward. And that's why they're doing that. So they're giving you the answer to help anybody who can't work out the answer there, but they can continue on to the next part and the next part and keep going down, picking up marks. They just have to keep going. Don't lose faith. Don't lose energy. Just keep going, keep going and, and fill in as much as you can.